sainthood for Bill. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we can all go to heaven now. <laughs> All righty, friends, we, uh, we bring our, our series to a conclusion today. I want to invite you to uh, open up in your uh, pew Bibles to page 1677 to the Gospel according to John and uh, chapter 16 today. John and chapter 16. And we'll beginning today at verse 1. John 16. Beginning today at verse 1, page 1677 in your pew Bible. This is Jesus speaking after the Last Supper, speaking to his disciples. All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. And they will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. And I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the Spirit of truth, comes... He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So ends our reading today, beloved. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this message and this series, Lord, this powerful series about the power of your promise, Lord, the presence of God. And as we bring it to a conclusion today, Lord, we pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds and our souls so that not only we hear the words and are transformed by them, but that we will absolutely feel and know the presence of your Holy Spirit within all of us who have come to Christ in faith. And I pray, Lord, I pray today that you will give me the words to share so that by your words, Lord, we all may grow. We all may come to resemble you more and more today. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So as we uh, wrap up this series today, I wanted to ask everybody a question. As we've dug into this study of the third person, the Holy Spirit, and his work in the church and in each one of us, do you feel differently today than you did two months ago? I want you to dwell on that a little bit. 
Do you feel differently? Do you, do you sense God's presence a little differently, a little more? Do you, do you sense, do you have a sense of at the same time conviction as you do of confirmation? I think it's important to dwell on those questions um, because I think the questions themselves come from the Holy Spirit in a sense. As I've been working through this uh, series, preparing and then sharing on Sundays, I've started to feel a little bit different myself. I like to think that maybe God is taking me from one place to another, helping to grow. My prayer is that that's true of all of us because I think that's God's will. Um, matter of fact, I know it's God's will that, uh, that we continue to grow. That's what an abiding relationship with uh, Jesus Christ is all about. Never staying the same. But day by day, moment by moment, growing to resemble Christ more and more. And that's ultimately the work of the Holy Spirit, the power of God's presence within. So if our, our reading today, uh, you know, through the first four verses, and I'm not going to reread them, um, encourage you to do so with the, or the bulletin or, or the uh, your Bibles, your pew Bibles. Um, Jesus, for the sake of his disciples, is really drawn a distinction between the disciples of Jesus Christ and those who are outside. And, and that illustrates the reality of the church. Um, as we share All Saints Day, not everybody's a saint, at least not according to God's terminology. Otherwise, if, if everybody was, then a lot of scripture doesn't make any sense. Uh, there couldn't be sheep and goats because there wouldn't be any goats. There wouldn't be tares and weeds because there wouldn't be any weeds. So Jesus is drawing this distinction between disciples and the world. Uh, but I think that the greatest <laughs> distinction beyond that in the world, uh, the greatest distinction is found within, in the contrast between the old person and the new creation in Christ, the work in our own hearts. We go back to uh, Romans chapter 8, which we, we talked about several weeks ago. I want you to remember to hear these words again. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit who received, uh, the Spirit you received, does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again, instead of being slaves to sin. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by Him we cry, "Abba, Father." The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children instead of slaves, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. That's the difference between being the old person and the new 
creation in Christ. Now, over the last three weeks, I uh, we shared the uh, uh, the mini part of the series on on spiritual gifts, the speaking gifts, serving gifts, and sign gifts. But the greatest gift that we receive when we come to Christ in faith, in addition to salvation, and that's the greatest one, the other greatest gift that we get is the gift of God's very presence within us. The gift of God's very presence within us does not exist prior to that moment when we come to Christ in faith. As Jesus spoke uh, in in our reading today, uh, starting at verse 13, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. Can you hear those words? Jesus saying of the Holy Spirit, it is from me. It is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine. And that's why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. I can't imagine a greater gift. You know, I think a lot of folks, and I'm one of them, think that these things here are just amazing. Okay? Connected to the internet, all the knowledge of the world can be found in my pocket. Not really. Because that pales in comparison to having all the knowledge of eternity present in my heart. And the power and presence of of God's Holy Spirit within us. That's the promise of Jesus when we come to him in faith. And so at the end of the day, the question becomes, how is it that we can hear the Spirit's voice? Throughout all of this series, we've talked about the Spirit's work of creation and renewal. And on a very personal level, it is the power of God's presence within that gives us the opportunity for creation and renewal over and over and over again. So sharing, I believe, these three primary ways that we can hear the Spirit's voice. And of course, it starts with a focus on the Word of God. It starts with a focus on the Word of God. Remember what we learned early on in this series from 2 Timothy chapter 3, that all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training the disciple in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I don't believe, friends... I don't believe that we can rightfully hear the Spirit's voice unless we take the time, we invest the time to get into what the Spirit has already spoken. Now, we, we share, I know Louise puts the bookmarks out, and that's a great, great tool to be in a, a through the Bible in one year, to spend time uh, in prayerful reading and studying of the Scripture. But even if you cannot do the, um, <coughs> you know, three chapters in a day, some people it glaze over, even if your only exposure is to like an email devotional, we, uh, the parish sends one out every, every week, um, and that's a great tool. Or even if you just pick up your Bible 
and you focus in for the day on one verse or one paragraph, understanding the context that it comes in, that will help you to hear the Word of God, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The promise that we get is that we will be reminded of what it is we need to know when we need to know it. But if we didn't know it to begin with, then the Spirit doesn't have anything to remind us of. And so I am, I am absolutely, I don't want to say the word begging because everybody's got free will to make a choice. I absolutely encourage us to spend some time in the Scripture on a regular basis, daily is best. To hear the Word of God, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit means we start with that with which the Holy Spirit has already spoken. So be in the Word of God. Be in Scripture. The second way that I believe we can hear the Word of God is to listen to godly people. Listen to godly people. Remember the old uh, the old uh, uh, nursery school thing of why it is, the Sunday school thing of why it is that we got one mouth and two ears. Well, we're supposed to listen more than speak. And so, listen to godly people. We will become what we consume, and that's the absolute truth. If we spend our time filling ourselves with nothing but political talk radio, then of course that's going to be the most important thing in our life. If we do nothing but listen to sports talk radio, then of course that's going to be the most important thing we hear in our life. We will become what we consume. And so bring godly people into your lives and listen to them. However, understand that we have to test the spirits. First John chapter 4 says this. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And that's the truth, and they exist today. They're all over the place today. And so there are a few tests about whether what we're listening to from somebody else is of God or of something other than God. Tests like this. Is what they're saying in line with Scripture? Is it consistent with what the Holy Spirit has already spoken? Does what they're saying and what we're hearing, does it glorify God? Or does it glorify the speaker? And that's a big one. Because even, quote, religious folk, that's a test you have to apply to them, apply to us. Does it glorify God or does it glorify the speaker? Does it build the kingdom of God? Or does it only put money in somebody's pocket? Does it build the kingdom of God? And ultimately, does it lead people to Jesus Christ? If you can answer yes to those questions, then that message and that speaker is of God. And we need to uh, be able to put ourselves in the position of listening to them because if those things are a yes, then I believe that the Holy Spirit of God is speaking through that person to be heard by you and me. Those are the tests. Test the Spirit. So focus on the Word of God. Listen to God's people. Not just listen. Listen and learn. Okay? And then thirdly is this, and I've alluded to it already here today, is in our prayer life. There have been a lot of times that uh, where I would... Uh, be in prayer, <laughs> excuse me, whether I'm 
just sitting in the front pew or kneeling at the rail or at home or wherever else. And in that prayer, I'm the one doing all the talking. And you know, there's, there's times when we do, in fact, need to pour out our heart to God, whether it's the shopping list or the lament or uh, the, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing or uh, where it is I'm going or what it is you're doing. But if we don't take the time within our prayer to be silent, we may not hear the response from God. There have been times, I believe, in my life where in the midst of prayer, I have heard that small, still voice, not always audible, but confirmed here and consistent with Scripture, consistent with glorifying God, consistent with building the kingdom, consistent with leading people to Jesus. I believe that's the voice of God that comes to me. If we don't take the time to be quiet, it becomes very hard to hear it. And if you go to the scriptures, there are plenty of opportunities in the gospel accounts where Jesus would also be quiet, giving us the model for prayer in that regard. So that spends, that's why we spend some time since we've come back uh, and to worship in person in silent prayer because it gives each one of us an opportunity to speak our prayer to the Lord individually and I hope also to take those few moments to just listen to what it is that God might be saying in reply. I believe there are probably other ways to uh, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, but I would suggest to you that those are the three primary ones. Immersing yourself in Scripture, because He's already spoken. Listening to godly people, applying the tests. And an active prayer life that is a two-way conversation and not speech-making on our part alone. And in so doing, in hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, and having the Holy Spirit changing our hearts and helping us to grow, there is an end result. And it's in the fruit that we bear, Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in, in us. And, and, you know, I think and in the times that we're living in, what is the Christian response to presidential politics, the Christian response to presidential politics is this, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. What is the Christian response to COVID-19? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the list goes on and on. What is the Christian's response to all of it, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Not a lot of the stuff that we see out there, but the stuff that the Holy Spirit brings in a true Christian's heart and life. That's the Christian response to all of this. So the final question that I would ask in this series is simply this. Can you imagine what would happen in this world and in this country if the church truly
gentleness and self-control instead of being the same as everybody else. Can you imagine the difference that that would make in the world around us? It can happen. It can happen, beloved. The reason it can happen is simply this, that the one who is in you, if you belong to Jesus Christ, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. First John chapter 4. For such, friends, is the power of the third person. The promise of God's presence. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the word that, uh, that you give us. It's not just a word, though, Lord. It's not just a word. Because you give your very presence to us, Lord. You create us in the image of the Father. You save us by the love of the Son. You guide us by the power of the Spirit. And Lord, we thank you so much for all the ways that you love us. But Lord, we pray today and always that we would know who we are As saints of the church, Lord, we are set apart for a sacred purpose because your very presence is with us. So help each one of us, Lord, to set our minds on the things above instead of the things of earth. And in so doing, Lord, in so doing, Love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. By living that way, people will truly be able to see you through us. And as a result, their lives will change. And maybe, just maybe, the world will change as well. Such is the power of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.